Hello again, and welcome to day two of week 16 of year two of the Religious Education Initiative. On Monday, on the first day, we read from Galatians and saw how uh, St. Paul is presenting clearly the Lord's coming as the transformation and the fulfillment of all the promises God had given to his people and the fulfillment of our nature as well. Uh, today, we're going to read uh, hymns from Christmas. So, of course, every year on December 25th, we celebrate the nativity or the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In this feast, we see our Creator and God become human. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He becomes present in our midst for our salvation and transformation and liberation, as St. Paul had been saying. The themes of this celebration are nothing less than the wonder and awe of beholding Emmanuel, God with us. But this marvel has manifold facets, which the Church meditates on in the hymns that accompany the feast. Now, there are a lot of hymns for Christmas. The feast day celebrations last two full days, not just one, and they begin with the royal hours on the morning of Christmas Eve, they continue with the vesperal liturgy that evening, and they finish with the orthros and the liturgy on Christmas Day itself. So there are a lot of hymns to pick from. We did a selection here that show kind of the same sorts of themes as St. Paul had been talking about. So this is the troparion of the royal hours. As she carried in her womb what she conceived without seed, Mary went to Bethlehem with Joseph, who was old, to enroll, for they were of the house and the lineage of David. The time arrived for her to give birth to her child, but then there was no place in the inn for them. Therefore, the grotto, the cave, served as a luxurious royal palace for the queen, and Christ the Lord is born to raise the image which was formerly fallen. Then from the sixth hour, this is the second idiomelon. Uh, an idiomelon, by the way, is a hymn that just has its own music. It doesn't match any other uh uh, any other tune, any other model hymn, it, it has its own music. So, hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth. Let the foundations be shaken, and let trembling seize the netherworld. For God, the Creator, has entered the physical world. He who created creation with his mighty hand is a fetus of his own creature. O oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how inscrutable are his judgments, how unsearchable his ways. And then we have the fourth idiomelon of the Vespers, Kekregaria, the hymns in the first half of the Vespers. What shall we offer you, O Christ, because you have appeared on earth as a man for our sakes? For each of the creatures made by you offers you its thanks. The angels offer their hymn. The heavens offer the star, the shepherds offer their wonder, the magi offer their gifts, the earth offers the cave, the desert offers the manger, and we offer a virgin mother. God, before the ages, have mercy on us. And then we have the fourth idiomelon of the Liti. Beholding him who was in God's image and likeness, fallen through transgression, that is, beholding mankind, Jesus bent the heavens and came down. He took up his dwelling in a virgin womb without change to himself, that he might refashion Adam, who had fallen in corruption and who was crying out, Glory to your epiphany, my Savior and my God. And then we have the Irmos, the model hymn of Old One, of the first canon of the feast. Christ is born, glorify him. Christ is come from heaven, go and meet him. Christ is on earth, arise to him. Sing to the Lord, all you who dwell on the earth, and in merry spirits, O you peoples, praise his birth, for he is glorified. 
And then we have uh, a, a troparion, a hymn of Ode 1, of Canon 1 of the Feast. The master builder, seeing the man whom he had constructed with his own hands, collapsed, bending the heavens down, now descends, and through a pure and holy virgin he unites wholly with his nature. He unites himself wholly with the nature of that man who had collapsed, having truly taken flesh, for he, the Lord and Master, is glorified. And then finally we have uh, another troparion of Ode 6 of Canon 2 of the Feast. God the Word, who was in the beginning with God, seeing our nature powerless to guard its ancient fellowship with him unharmed. He now grants it to our nature a new strength. He abases himself in a second act of fellowship. He makes our nature once again free from the passions. Now there are a lot of themes here, but the primary emphasis is on God the Word, the Son of God, lowering himself from the heights of divinity and infinity, becoming part of his creation, becoming the least part of his creation, being carried in the womb of the Virgin Mary, being born in the natural manner, and lying in a cave, in a manger for feeding animals. He lowers himself, becoming, uniting himself with us so that he can restore us, so that he can heal us, so that he can bring us back to the communion, the relationship with him for which we were created, so that he can raise us up from the depths to the heights. This is, in fact, the same thing that St. Paul was talking about. Uh, he comes to make us who had been slaves, who had been low, who had been helpless. He comes to raise us up and to make us children of God, to make us his own body, to unite himself with us. So this is the joy of Christmas. It's not just, oh, what a cute little baby Jesus in the manger. It's not just uh, Christmas carols and, and presents. It's not just Santa Claus, although all of these things are great. But the point of Christmas is God has come down to dwell in our midst. And dwelling in our midst, he raises us up. He transforms us. He heals us. He makes us whole once again. And we are called to embrace this, to rejoice in this, to participate in this, and to live in the joy and the glory and the life and the love of this relationship with God which is given to us. I point out especially the, the, the hymn about how when Christ came and offered himself and salvation to all of us, he, uh, uh, everything he had created offered something in thanksgiving, which is what we do. God gives himself to us and we offer something in return to him in thanksgiving and 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 the angels offered their hymns the heavens offered the star the shepherds gave their wonder they didn't have anything else the magi brought their gifts the earth gave the cave the desert gave the manger and we give to him a virgin mother we offer the best of humankind to the lord and he enters into our midst by means of her and unites himself with us. So this is, this is what Christmas is about, as the hymns say clearly. So God bless you all. Merry Christmas. I'll see you for day three.